Okay, this is one of the deals I ran into on this bike. Uh, usually don't run into this on the gold wings too much. Uh, I've got an electric impact wrench. A Milwaukee, half inch. I think this one puts out 180 foot pounds. And typically when I take these wheels off, I got a lift here so it's really easy. Uh, I throw an 18 millimeter socket on there, a six inch extension and a 12 inch. And they usually spin right off. Uh, these bolts are supposed to be tightened to 80 foot pounds. Uh, I've got an air wrench here which puts out 300 foot pounds is what I'm using to get these off. Uh, these are what we would call good and tight, which is typically uh, stripped and broken. Uh, in the case of lug nuts, not so much, but they are way over tight. Uh, I use this when I tighten them and an impact wrench. Always use the impact wrench, 80 foot pounds. If you don't use the impact wrench, you should at least uh, understand what 80 foot pounds feels like or use a torque wrench. But an impact wrench and a torque stick is really the way to go because it's uh, within a couple pounds, it's fast, it's easy. And uh, one of the problems with using a wrench is you put so much downward pressure on it, you'll wreck the nut and you could actually bend the stud. So impact wrench is nice because you get a nice straight shot at it. And uh, I usually leave the, leave the transmission in neutral. And I'm guessing that's well over 150 foot-pounds. Uh, my 180 foot-pound wrench will not loosen. And as you can see, at 300 foot-pounds, all right, I let the thing pump up so it gets a little extra pressure. And there she goes. So, advertised 300 foot-pounds on this. It's a Sanborn. Uh, I'm guessing it probably only does maybe 220, 230 foot-pounds. But still, as you can see, that was a lot of, uh, lot of torque on those things. Uh, the nuts all look good. I think they'll be fine. But... Uh, I run into this mainly on the Harleys and those you have to use a four foot pipe and a wrench to get the axle nut off. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to over tighten these things. The wheels will not fly off. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull this wheel off, stick a car tire on here and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how we slide her back in there and what a slam dunk that can be. Okay, I use an airlift. I've got a couple airlifts in here. Uh, if you're going to do any work on motorcycles at all, this is the only way to go. Uh, these things are just a godsend. They'll lift 1,300 pounds. They advertise 1,000, but they'll do up to 1,500 pounds, really. And uh, they're not that expensive. I think the first one I paid six and a half for, and I paid seven and a half for the second one. And I'm thinking about getting another one uh, for my house. Uh, just for my own oil changing and that kind of thing. I made up this ladder thing out of some angle iron and some flat steel, which sits in here like that. And what I do is I just lift it up, pull the wheel off. And drop it right down. So that makes it pretty handy, although I usually hook it up here so it doesn't drop in the front like that, like that. When I get the new tire in here, I roll the tire up here, lift this up, I'll put a prop underneath here, slide the tire right on, and it's a slam dunk Aruno. Uh, these lifts really work out well. Uh, a lot of guys will take gold wings and they'll tip them on their side lay them over on the right side and pull the wheel out. That's a perfectly uh, good way to do it. Uh, there's no problems with that. You're not gonna wreck the bike. You're not gonna do any harm to it. Uh, that's just a great idea. Uh, another way to do this, uh, if you look at this jack I have here, uh, I think I bought this at Northern Tool. I'm not real sure. I might've bought it online. It's a platform scissor jack. And what's nice about this is the bike can't roll forward or backward, lifts it real nice. What you can do is drive onto a trailer, stick one of these on there, let the wheel stick out on the tailgate, 
put this underneath it, lift it up so you, uh, you have clearance, drop the tailgate and you basically have what I have here. And you can use your, uh, your trailer to change the tire. So those are just some ideas I've seen and uh, they all make sense to me. Uh, changing the tire is really not, shouldn't really be that difficult a thing. Anyway, and buy yourself one of these. I call them torque sticks, they come under different names. This one clearly is rated at 80 foot pounds or 110 nanometers for the metric guys. And uh, get one. I use this, I have a couple of them. I use, I use them on all the wheels here, so it's the only way to go. Okay, putting this thing on isn't that difficult. Here again, you just need to use this ladder thing that I built. This is actually the panel that goes behind the, uh, or underneath here. Uh, the tire is mounted, but it's, it, as you can see here, I can get my fingers between the bead and the tire. Get the nuts started. Oh, little center cap came off. Get him pushed back in there. And what I do is a typical thing where you do every other bolts, just snug them, and then you uh, you'll go around and skip each bolt, uh, kind of in a crisscross pattern. And then I'll do every one in sequence to get them up to the 80 foot pounds. And then once that's done, then I inflate the tire, set the bead, set it for 24 pounds, and I'm done. So what I'll do is I'll take the torque stick and an extension, and this is the 18 millimeter socket, and him in there. Here again, I skip every, every other one just to make sure that I get the rim seated properly. So then what I do is I get to the bolt with, that lines up with the valve stem. And she's a done deal. So that's it. That's how difficult it can be. Get the ladder out of here. Slip this guy back in. And I'll inflate the tire, like I said, to uh, 24 pounds. This one actually has a TPS on it, so it does have weights on the other end to, to nullify the weight of that. Uh, typically, I powder coat the rims silver. Uh, this one was black, so I left it alone, so I left the valve. I typically replace that with a rubber stem. Uh, the rubber stems, in my opinion, are superior to the steel, even though they're you know, a buck a piece, they never leak and they never go bad. And you change them every time anyway. So that's really all that's to it. Okay, tires on, inflated. As you can see, it uh, sits just fine. Um, uh, the tire I'm using is actually a, a federal tire. And uh, it's a 195, 195, 60, 16. That's about the largest tire I can get on the wing. What's nice about this is the diameter of the tire is slightly larger than the stock tire. So the speedometer is right on the money. 
Typically the speedometers on the gold wings are off by about three or four miles at 60. This will bring it right to the money. So uh, that's why I go with that one. So it's a standard, it's a standard uh, radial car tire. I don't use uh, run flats. I don't believe in them. I, I know there's a lot of problems with running a run flat. Uh, harsh ride, poor, poor mileage, uh, all around it's just not a good fit. It uh, kind of defeats the purpose of using a car tire on a motorcycle. So I go with just a standard radial tire just like billions and billions of cars all over the planet use and uh, they seem to work out just fine. You can expect a uh, minimum 30,000 miles out of this tire, more than likely 45. Uh, same with the front tires. So you're looking at an investment of about $200 for three tires that'll last you 40,000 miles. That's a pretty economical deal. So it's, uh, it's a nice setup.